has been a real change in attitudes in fishing and also I think in the greater community. You know, we're more aware about how we interact with the environment when we're getting our food. Fishmen, I think we were pretty blasé in the past. We used to go fishing, we're just focused on that. Now we're more aware of our impact on the environment and how little things can minimise that impact, you know. Um, we've got nets that catch less small fish, we've got doors that don't drag hard along the bottom, they're more up in the air, and um, we've got mitigation devices for, you know, warp strikes. The guys that are in the industry now, they're not there just for the money, they're there for because they love what they're doing, and a big part of it is having that wildlife around us. So I think it's positive, the change, and it's good to work in with um, people like the Seabird Trust, you know, that are educating us and changing our attitudes. Welcome to Cosgrove Creek, which is part of the Yellow-Eyed Penguin Trust's Long Point Reserve. And it's great to have local Otago fishermen assisting the Trust in its penguin monitoring work. Today we're going to be actually monitoring nests in, the, in, this, in this area. Um, we'll be visiting each nest um, and catching the chicks, measuring, weighing, and if they're of good enough weight, we'll be transpondering them. So we'll be moving off down this gully here, and we'll be expecting a nest just down in those Mahoian nettles. So the nettle nest is something that I think you guys will enjoy. <laughs> so we want you to get, get well into it and savour the moment. Yellow-eyed penguins are facing big challenges on the mainland of New Zealand in terms of their breeding terrain, the environment they're in. The coastal forests and shrublands virtually on the mainland have been destroyed, they've been converted to farmland. So the yellow-eyed penguins are making do with remnants, flax, um, shrublands, even in some cases gorse. Yeah, buddy. Hey! <coughs> oh, both! A bit of everything. He's got me too. There's a fatty. I've got a hundred and thirty-two. Consistent. When you're on the ocean, these animals are the things that break up your day. You know, you look out there and you see them, and it goes, "Wow, you know, I'd seen this, or I saw that, or you know, they become your sort of like little, little mates almost. You know, so and and you learn their habits. And if you didn't see the seabirds and you didn't see the mammals and other things, it probably wouldn't be such a great job. When I was younger, when I first started fishing, when I was, um, you know, in my teens and things, the TT were just endless. They were just like black clouds that would just come on a change of weather and just roll in like cloud, you know, and they would just go all day long like that, just unbelievable numbers. The numbers have just dropped off and dropped off and dropped off, and it's a, they're tough on those poor birds. They just, uh, they, they got so many things to deal with. They got over overfishing or catching, uh, pollution, loss of habitat, a whole bunch of things. So if we want to keep them, we're going to have to look after them a bit better and look after their habitat. Mm. Try and imagine what it was like two, three, four hundred years ago really starts to inspire you as to what we might try and aim for, what we could possibly achieve to get some of those things we've lost back on the mainland. Got these small colonies of Titi here, Cosgrove Island behind us. Imagine if we could have these colonies as they were on this mainland coast. Thousands of birds, thousands of breeding pairs, shrublands and forests that have now gone, filled with these bird burrowing petrels, TT mottled cooks petrels. You talk to people who are lucky enough to go to offshore islands, Codfish Island or the Snares, they come back, they're blown away because of the number of breeding seabirds, burrowing seabirds in, on those islands. We don't have that on the mainland anymore. People can't go and see it. 
we're going to get support, the public, to get behind it. We need to try and demonstrate and, and establish those colonies on the mainland of New Zealand. And this is something at Long Point that the Yellow-Eyed Penguin Trust is, is, is trying to work towards. TDM, they're one of our global migrating birds. They're pretty amazing, really. Once they've finished here with the chick, they head to the Northern Hemisphere and they actually sort of hang off Japan and then they'll move up into the um, Bering Sea and off the coast of Alaska and then they sort of gradually move back down and come back down to New Zealand next season for breeding. There's one. TT, mutton bird, sooty shearwater. People call them all three of those and they're all the same bird. They congregate out at sea and then they come into their burrows and sometimes when you've got a dense colony you'll hear them but often it's just um, their wings as they go overhead. It sort of sounds a bit like a glider or something. There's no noise, it's just and it goes overhead and you know it's something fast and it's quick. There's no grace about their landing, it's just a full on crash landing and um, it's usually within metres of their burrows. There is some risk to the uh, seabirds in our operation. Um, we found they do come close to the boat and interact with the back of the boat when we're working our fish. Um, but there's some fairly simple ways to, to minimise that risk. We have copied some of the boats further north that regularly use a cone. It's a very simple idea, it clips onto the wire, slides down to the water level and it's, it's there. It does two things, we haven't seen a bird hit the wire with the cone yet, but in theory if it did, um, it would slide down the wire and come off at the cone. It's at water level um, and, it, and the birds see it easy. You can see them fly and then shy away. You know, whereas if we haven't got, got it on, they can fly in and hit the wire and be hurt. And it basically comes down to offal management. When we're discharging offal over the back of the boat, the birds are in a real feeding frenzy. And we've found with a simple change in our working practice, um, it's a positive outcome for the birds. Um, we knife our fish and, and gut, throw the guts into a box nowadays and tip the box once over the side at the back of the boat. We used to just throw the guts on the deck and let it wash away. The birds would come in and we'd have um, striking, striking the wire cables that go to the door. So that's just a very simple way, just, just be a wee bit more aware and it's all positive. Going out with Ant today on the boat was great. It was, a, it was a first, my first experience on a fishing boat seeing how these guys are, are working, how they're trying to make a living. It's hard work, it's a spectacular place to be working having said that, and really nice to see some of the mitigation techniques that, um, that um, Ant is, is um, working with to try and, you know, and um, reduce those kind of um, interactions with um, seabirds. So that was excellent, just a, a brilliant day, and the weather played ball too. We need to collaborate, you know, we need to work together to sort all these problems out and it's not just the seabird and it's not just the mammals, it's, it's the whole, the fishing thing, um, the farming thing, you know, it's, it's life in general in New Zealand nowadays. Yeah, I think if we keep doing this more often, we will understand each other's point of view and work together, you know, to, to solve the problems. Mm -hmm.